Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, a Pittsburgh Steelers podcast made by fans like you, for fans like you. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast, where today I want to talk to everyone about two of the articles and podcasts that I put out about maybe a month or month and a half ago about six deals the Steelers need to make during the 2016 offseason and then the seven deals the Steelers won't make. And the reason I want to revisit this is because, more or less, I I don't feel as though I'm blowing hot air on a lot of these issues, and I'd like to revisit some of the things I say. I'm not like one of these so-called analysts that are out there that's going to say, hey, you know what, we need to fire Todd Haley, and this is why. And then they never go back to it and you know retract what they're going to say. So I'm not a know-it-all. And I never claim to be a know-it-all, but I do like to point out sometimes when I'm right or wrong. And with that said, here we go. Six deals I felt the Steelers needed to make during the 2016 offseason included William Gay, who was now extended, signed, no longer a free agent. He's under the Steelers' wings for a few more years here, signing a three-year contract. Uh, Le'Veon Bell, who has not uh, signed any type of long-term deal yet. Uh, just currently getting back into rehab, but something I feel will happen before the uh, end of training camp in the preseason. Uh, The Pittsburgh Steelers also haven't moved on a backup quarterback yet, but one thing they have done is Cortez Allen, they have asked him, they've come to Cortez and said, hey, we want you to take a pay cut because you're getting paid way too much. And because you make too much money, we could use that money and allocate it somewhere else. So basically, the Cortez Allen uh, deal that's going on right now, where they've asked him to take a reduction in pay and restructure his, his contract is because, well, hey, you've been on the injured reserve the last two years. We've been paying you an awful lot of money, and we're not going to pay you any money anymore, and you're probably not going to be on this roster unless you take this reduction. So uh has to be a mutual agreement there between both parties. Then we look at... Uh, the other two deals I felt needed to happen was James Harrison, who has decided he will return for one more season with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Awesome deal for the team. Once again, provides depth and veteran leadership among the linebacker core, particularly the outside linebackers. And then finally, another deal we're waiting on to happen is whether or not David DeCastro gets a uh, restructure and a long-term deal. I do feel that the Steelers will exercise their fifth-year option on the former first-round draft pick, just as they had with Cameron Hayward in uh, in the previous year. So uh, going towards the seven deals the Steelers wouldn't be making, number one at the top of my list was Eric Weddle. This was everyone's dream, wish, and fantasy was to get Eric Weddle signed to the Steelers so that they could bolster their secondary with a veteran safety. I was long a proponent of saying that Weddle would not come here because he's too expensive and he's also maybe a little uh, too old on the north side of 30, turning 31 the previous month. So Eric Weddle, of course, signed with the Baltimore Ravens. I hit that nail right on the head. Uh, Another one I was looking at and talking about the Steelers pursuing backup quarterbacks, actually the next three that I talk about was Chase Daniel was a hot name that came out as a free agent of the Kansas City Chiefs, but showing that uh, he was going to cost too much money. And if you saw just how much he got paid to be a backup with the Eagles, again, as I've said in other podcasts, the networking and connections, he followed his former offensive coordinator in Kansas City, Doug Peterson, who is now the head coach over in Philadelphia, followed him over to the city of brotherly love, has a good paycheck in line and potential to even get some starting time knowing the history and injury history and poor health of a one Sam Bradford who also signed a huge deal. So Chase Daniel also off the table, another one that I hit. Uh, Two that haven't happened yet, and I'm saying that these are the deals the Steelers won't make. Uh, Well, sort of kind of one hasn't happened. Michael Vick is still out there as a free agent, uh, making claims that the Steelers are not going to sign him. And at the same time, Landry Jones is still on the roster. A lot of people feel that he won't be, and he may be cut. A little too early to tell right there, but I'm still siding with Landry Jones being on the 53-man roster to open the 2016 season this year. Another one that I am uh, releasing a podcast on as well is the Steelers not taking a backup quarterback in the draft. 
The Steelers are not going to draft a quarterback. If you want to hear a long, droning conversation on that, I have a 23-minute podcast basically just about the arguments towards the Steelers not drafting a quarterback, at least in the 2016 draft. Or you could visit SteelCityUnderground.com for the written version of the same article for arguments against the Steelers drafting a quarterback. Uh, And finally, I'm going to wrap up with Brandon Boykin, who I feel probably won't be on this roster. Uh, He is currently a free agent. Of course, the Steelers traded a fifth-round pick for him last season to acquire him from the Philadelphia Eagles. And it was just a, we don't know what the huge mess is with Brandon Boykin. There obviously has to be something that someone isn't telling us because not only did he get benched in Philadelphia, which of course the dump, dumpster fire that was Chip Kelly's whole organization there, uh, it was hard to tell just because of how everything was run with Chip Kelly at the helm as both the general manager and head coach of the Eagles the previous few seasons as to whether or not Brandon Boykin was uh, just being unfairly treated or if he was damaged goods. And it appears by the way the Pittsburgh Steelers with Mike Tomlin and his coaching staff basically sat and benched Boykin for the better part of last year. There may be some more truth in the latter rather than the, rather than the former. Uh, to explain, Brandon Boykin is still a free agent. And not only is he a free agent, but he basically hasn't had any visits from uh, not even a nibble or bite from any of the other NFL uh, teams. So it's kind of tough to say you want this guy back when he barely played. He couldn't even play over Antoine Blake, who, of course, as you know, uh, from my previous endeavors on here and, and my other shows, I, I'm not a fan of Antoine Blake, and I'm actually kind of happy to see that he uh, the, the choice was taken out of the Steelers' front office hands as to whether to re-sign him since he went over to the Tennessee Titans on a one-year deal. So I'm totally cool with that. But Brandon Boykin, apparently, there is something that someone isn't telling us as to why this guy not only couldn't get on the field, but now he's not even generating any interest among other franchises. So... Uh, that's still a to be determined. I'm not saying he won't be. Well, I am saying he won't be back in Pittsburgh. And I thought it was basically because other teams would gener- have more interest in him and show him more money than the Steelers would be willing to offer. Now that that doesn't seem to be the case, I might have to eat those words and Boykin could end up back on the roster. But once again, I don't expect that to happen at least anytime soon. The other one I don't expect to happen anytime soon that may happen in the future is the release and or trade of Sean Sweejum. I do feel that Sean Sweejum is an exceptional player. However, once again, this is another guy that's uh, on the better side of 30 years old and being not only an older kicker who just signed a large contract last season, he's also coming off of an injury. So after sitting out for an entire year and the Steelers finding a younger, cheaper, and all albeit maybe uh, better alternative in Chris Boswell, it's going to be tough for for me or possibly the, that front office. I just can't see them justifying hanging on to an expensive older player as Sean Sweejum. However, Sean Sweejum does have value. He does have pedigree when it comes to being a good kicker within this league. And we may see that the Steelers dangle him as trade bait in order to make another acquisition, be it in the draft or sometime during training camp in the preseason. So that's a deal I don't feel is going to happen right away, but may happen sooner. So uh, I'd like to thank all of you for being listeners. Thank you for tuning in. And don't forget to check this out uh, on the web at SteelCityUnderground.com. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 